What's going on, everybody? It's Brody Tennant with Tennant Commercial Group. We have another TCG TV episode. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about co-work space, and we have Brandon Kostinski with us. All righty, so we have Brandon Kostinski with us with Pivot Real Estate Holdings. They specialize in co-work spaces. Brandon, welcome, and tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, thanks, thanks for having me, Brody. So um, again, my name is Brandon. Um, just a short little history, bring everybody up to speed, how I ended up in the co-working industry. Um, I grew up in the restaurant business. My family owned restaurants growing up. Um, so... Uh, about five, six years ago, when I started running the restaurant for my family, I had a uh, co-working space in downtown Baltimore that I was a member of. I was doing the commute back and forth every day downtown and started to get real tired of driving downtown every day just to have um, a workspace that was good for me. Um, I saw the need for it in the suburban market. So we opened our first co-working space location in Catonsville in mid-2018. Uh, we opened our second location in Ellicott City in 2019, and we opened our third location in Clarksville just this year in 2020. Very right, cool. So looks like it's it's caught on if you're able to to grow three locations in a short period of time. Um, yeah, again, uh, very good. Good is the wrong word. Timing with COVID has been extremely helpful. With again, more people working from home. Yeah, I could imagine um, right now with businesses that are up in the air in regards to when they're bringing people back to work or people that need office space and um, they don't feel comfortable being around a large group of people. Uh, I'm sure there's, exactly. a, there's a niche there that you're feeling so or that you're, you're taking advantage of right now. Um, tell us uh, more about like what you're seeing in the, the marketplace. I mean, obviously, there's a change right now with COVID going on. So what, what are you seeing in regards to workspace and you versus normal office space right now? Yeah, so um, we're really getting a bird's eye view of a lot of things happening right now for, for a multitude of reasons. Our, our members are, are in a variety of categories. So we have the average worker who uh, may work, work from home, works for a contractor, et cetera, et cetera, um, who gets space on their own, right? So that's somebody who works from home, who's just tired of working from home and wants to get a space to work. And then we have the category of businesses that rent space for their staff, right? So um, there's a couple of different ways people are coming in and we're, and we're seeing shifts in, in both of those, right? Um, so the biggest example with people working from home is people who have been working from home for years, who may have been working at home for 10 years, uh, are now wanting to get outside of the house really they're saying because now they're forced to be home, right? Yep. So before they were working from home because they they chose to, I mean, obviously for their job, they worked from home, but they could have gone to the coffee shop, whatever. They chose to work from home, but now that they've been forced to be home for so long and they're allowed to get back out, we're seeing a huge influx of, of work from home workers, right? Um, now, what we're also seeing is an increase of local companies that are doing away with entire departments that are no longer working in-house in office, right? So for example, the University of Maryland literally got rid of an entire one department floor. They sent everybody home with a computer and said, you're working from home now for the foreseeable future. Um, so we're seeing a large increase of people who are newly working from home, um, right? And then we're also seeing an increase in the amount of companies who are based in other states, um, who had their staff working from home before, but are now saying, um, we think it's better structures for our staff to have a dedicated place for them to go to work every day. You know, if our long-term goal is gonna be to, to, to continue with stay at home, we wanna make sure that our employees have a productive place to do it. Makes sense. So uh, what, are the, what are some of the, the projects you're working on? Obviously given there's a different influx of demand and just a lot of different <laughs> change in the marketplace, what's some stuff that you're working on? Yes. Yeah, so um, again, different categories of things we're working on. We're obviously working on continuing to grow our brand pivot, right? Um, we want to continue to saturate the Howard County, Baltimore County market 
before too many more competitors move in, right? It's only a matter of time before some of these national chains that have been focusing most of their time and money on the city start to see that there's also money to be made in the outlying areas, right? Um, most of the big chains we work, uh, spaces, which is owned by Regis, most of those guys, they do not focus in, in the suburbs at all. They're strictly focused on the city. Um, so one of our biggest projects right now is starting to, again, get as many locations open during this period as we can so that the, by, by the time somebody else comes in, um, we already have brand recognition in these areas, right? The second project we're really working on is, is getting landlord partners, right? We're in a very interesting business where um, even most of the bigger guys, they're building their businesses on landlord partnerships, right? They're partnering with a landlord who comes in, has the space, uh, gets it ready for them to come in, and then they operate it as a co-working space and they split the revenue. So we're working on building partners uh, in different areas to build the business with, which flows back into the first part of that, which is open more locations, right? Um, another project we're working is really starting to offer more business services, right? We're getting a lot of startup businesses that are starting that um, they want mail receiving, they want phone answering, right? They want to have all these aspects of a business without having the physical office or having to have all those employees. So we're really starting to work out building out the, um, you know, if, uh, if a member is starting up an LLC and they use this as their office, not only give them a space to work, but they can have their mail sent here. We sort their mail for them. We forward it to them. We answer their calls for them. So we're really starting to work on building out again that business services category. Hmm. So you're going to be more of a, a tool for some entrepreneurs too that are kind of aren't ready for their own office space, but they need somewhere to go when they're uh, either just starting out or need some help in other probably aspects of entrepreneurship as well. Absolutely. Well, and a big part of that is when with a, a business with the state, it can't be registered to a home address, right? So a lot of these startup business owners, they, they, they don't just need it. They have to have that address as, as a commercial building. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, everything you just said, and also s several other legal areas that something like this covers for them. Yeah. And to touch on something else uh, you said earlier was that a lot of the big brands were focusing on the city. Uh, and I assume right now, especially in some of the bigger cities like New York, uh, people are moving out of the city right now. Have you seen anything in regards to more people or more jobs and moving out into the county where you obviously more spread out? And uh, yeah, it's it's really interesting you say that, right? Because I've been I've been uh, paying real close attention to the shifts this is causing. Not yet, um, but I believe that it's a, I believe that it's inevitable. Um, this is really it's causing such a big shakeup in so many ways. I'm personally, I'm finding it hard to, where do I concentrate on, on seeing the, the change, right? Because if you, if you focus in on paying attention to what companies are changing the way they're using offices and stuff like that, there's enough information to, to, to fill your, your, your week. You get what I'm saying? Because again, things are progressing so quickly, but what you mentioned, you know, that the exodus from the city, um, is something that I'm absolutely keeping an eye on. These are all different things that, again, I think the virus has spurred and that are super important, not just for my industry, but for, for real estate as a whole. This is changing. <laughs> this is changing real estate as a whole. I just saw the other day, Staples now has a co-working space company. Staples office supply store is now in real estate, right? Yep. I mean, who would have who thought that 10 years ago that Staples would, would be in the real estate game, right? Um so uh, again, it's, it's just an absolutely amazing time of change. So what's, so you touched on some of these other guys getting into the space and some other big, big companies um, that focus in, in, in the inner cities. Uh, what's, what separates Pivot from some of those, those big guys? Why do people use Pivot over some of these big, uh, big companies? Yeah, great question. So I always kind of use the analogy, you know, do you want to call Domino's for a pizza or do you want to go to the family owned pizza place down the street, right? Um, there, there hasn't really been that option in the co-working industry up to this point, partially because it's such a new industry um, and partially because it's, uh, it's not something you just wake up one day and say, hey, I'm going to open a co-working space, right? Mm -hmm. Most family businesses are in the restaurant, retail, things like that. Um, so how we differentiate ourselves is, uh, again, the same way the benefits of going to your local pizza place versus Domino's, right? We know your name. You know, we know about your family. We, uh, you know, you're not just a number when you walk in the door, right? Um, 
a lot of our members will text their community manager 12 midnight, right? That these are just things that, that you can't do uh, when you're just a, a member of one of the bigger spaces. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot to be said for starting guys that, that focus on quality and focus on an individual approach. So, um, absolutely. When I'm I, I'm sure that you can attest to this too in the commercial real estate industry. You know the uh, the landlords who are who are willing to work with their tenants, help them get started, things like that. Uh, although it it might not be as beneficial immediately, it, it it's it's better in the long run to build those relationships. Yeah. Now, touch a little bit more on the relationships you have with landlords and the partnerships. I know we spoke about it before um, and having your business there not only um, provides a, an occupancy for the landlord, but you also bring a lot of traffic with your type of use. I mean, talk more about the business and how you benefit the centers and your relationship with, with landlords. Yeah, again, another, another really good topic. Um, so I always like to start this with, you know, take your ordinary strip center, right? You're going to have uh, you know, the sub shop, um, you know, yada, yada, go down the list, right? Say you got a sub shop, a nail shop, a phone store, right? Uh, these are all businesses that, that people are going to frequent once a week, once a month, right? Somebody's going to go to the pizza shop once or twice a week. They're going to be there for a few minutes. They're going to get their pizza. They're going to be out, right? The person going to the nail shop, they're going to go there uh, maybe once a month. They're going to go in for two hours and they're going to leave, maybe stop and get something to eat on the way out, right? Uh, we have a very unique business in the sense of we can have a retail storefront, but people are coming to our business five days a week, eight, 10, 12, I'm not lying, 14 hours a day, some people will be sitting in pivot, right? Um, and this creates a very unique opportunity for landowners uh, because if you're forward thinking and you're thinking the way that I do, your thought is those people who are at pivot eight to 10, 12 hours a day, they're gonna get hungry. And what are they gonna do? They're gonna walk outside and go to your other tenant next door and they're gonna get a pizza, right? And then the next time they need to get their nails done, they're just gonna hang late at work and go to the nail place next door, right? Uh, so it's really creating an ecosystem. It's creating a community uh, where it might ordinarily be hard to create one, um, right? So how our partnerships basically work is right now we have um, a landlord that we work with who owns a variety of different shopping centers. And uh, he's basically been saying, hey, this is where uh, we want to increase some foot traffic. That's our goal, right? Increase foot traffic, increase uh, the foot traffic for our other tenants. You want to open a co-working space. Here's our space. You open the co-working space. It solves two problems in one, right? Um, it works for us because it keeps us from putting out the overhead to get new locations open. And it works for the landlord because it's bringing... Uh, quite a nice size increase in foot traffic to their spaces. And is it percentage of revenue type of deals is how you've structured some of those, those deals? Yes. Yeah, so we, we've done that. And we, so our leases a variety of leases. Some of our leases are our standard uh, leases and some of our leases are a percentage revenue split. Um, so it's, it's gone both ways. Our, our preference, there's good things to be said for both. Right. Yeah. Um, so it's hard to even say which one of preference is, but, uh, just having that partnership really is, is, is great for, for everybody. Yeah. It's made about having a good relationship with the landlord. And, and at that point, if it, if it makes sense for both parties, you, I, I have a hard time believing you wouldn't be able to, to structure a deal, um, to get you into the center or to make it beneficial for both parties. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, again, and it really goes back to, you know, there's, uh, you know, there's, there's some landlords who are just, you know, they've been doing it this way forever and there's nothing, there's no right or wrong way. Right. Um, but I do, our, our goal is definitely to come across some of those more forward thinking landlords, a little more long-term minded than, than short-term. Now, long-term, uh, what do you, where do you see this, uh, this, this co-op working space? Um, what are, in Post pandemic, once we have this, uh, now that this vaccine is apparently apparently out there, um, right. where do you see the future of this office space? Yes, yeah, so you know, even before the pandemic, I knew that I I had a, a funny inkling that this was the way things are going. I think I think co working is not the only co thing that's going to go big. I think co living, which is starting to get big in the, some of the inner cities. Uh, which is kind of the same thing as co-working. You have your own place to live. It has all the furniture, all the internet, everything. 
at one monthly price, no lease. Um, I think co-medical is something I've seen popping up. It's, uh, you know, same thing as a co-work, but you have individual medical office suites you can rent on a monthly basis. Um, even at our location in Clarksville, there's something called the Common Kitchen, which is 10 individual restaurant stalls, which are rented on a monthly basis, right? For restaurant startups to come in. So I really think as a whole, the shared industry is growing and there's a variety of reasons for that. Uh, my generation doesn't have the money that the previous generation did. There's, you know, there's more kids than ever living at home with their parents. Um, it's not as easy to get approved for a home anymore as it was. There, there's a lot of things changing the marketplace. Um, so I see co-working continue to grow in a variety of ways, both the work from home workers and corporations using it. And I also see co-everything growing over the next 5, 10, 15 years. And as more companies, I guess, get a com or a custom or more persons get accustomed to having that type of space and kind of create that, that's their work environment. I'm sure that it's going to create a much more of an, an easy transition for them to, to stay in that type of uh, type of setup. Absolutely. You bring up an interesting point, you know, even now, maybe two in five people we run across actually know what co-working is. We'll say, do you know what co-working is? They have no idea. It's like trying to explain a computer to them in 1980. They don't understand it and they don't see a need for it, right? But once you get that computer in your hands and realize all I can do, then you realize that you need it, right? Um, so we're, we're still, again, like you said, you know, the more people use it, the better. It's still something that it's so new and it's really still growing. We'll have a member and they'll tell their friend, hey, you know, I've been working at Pivot. Oh, what's Pivot? Oh, it's this place. You got it. So, you know, yeah, we're, we're really in that stage right now. It's more important than ever for people to be trying it out. Yeah, I could imagine. Um, yeah, so I, obviously that's a, it's a really interesting topic right now given COVID and I, I appreciate you for coming on Brandon um, thank you absolutely. for sharing your uh, your experiences and your what you guys have to offer with us absolutely I really really appreciate you having me no problem what's the what's the best way if you want to learn more about pivot or uh, contact you with uh, some some potential leasable space yeah absolutely so uh, pivotmd.net p-i-v-o-t-m-d.net is our website you can get our uh, email, phone number, contact on there. Uh, you can just submit the form. Uh, there's plenty of ways on there to get a hold of us. Very cool. Yeah, thank you again for joining us. And uh, keep uh, keep killing it during the COVID period. And I'm, I'm sure you guys will have plenty of success. Absolutely. I really appreciate you having me, Brody. Have a good one, all right? All right, you too. All right, everybody. Thank you guys for watching. That's another episode of TCG TV. Uh, if you have any questions at all about any commercial real estate needs or any of our guests, uh, feel free to message us or, uh, or call us on 443-717-2336. All righty. Have a good day. Bye.